How's it going everyone? Sephir here and today we are back with another video. I'm going to be focusing these next couple of days on things that I see a lot of people asking about, especially in the early levels and just trying to help new players get acclimated towards the game, right? So today we're going to talk about tanking. We're going to break this down into two sections. The first section is going to be why you should tank and the second section is going to be how to tank it's going to be a guide it's going to be explaining all the mechanics and tips and tricks that i know from testing this game from hours and hours on in so trust me i'm a big mage player at heart i love fire and ice gauntlet uh, but i have switched to tank for now because i see the big need myself so if that tells you anything then you know that that should definitely speak a lot uh, so it, it's quite fun. So let's look into that first part, and that's going to be why should you tank? So early in the game, all the way up to 23, there's really no reason to have a tank until you hit level 23. Then when you hit 23, it becomes a huge issue for everyone, and that's starting with the Amarine Excavation. Everyone is going to need a tank for this dungeon. Not only are they going to need a tank, they're actually going to need a tank that knows how to tank. Because the last boss of the Amarine Excavation is actually quite hard. Simon Gray will put you in your place if you don't know what you're doing. So there's a few ways to deal with him. But if you are a good tank and you are able to make use of your dodge and block mechanics. And you know how to properly hold threat. Then you will be sailing your group through experience runs right and that's going to be the biggest difference between a good tank and a bad tank is knowing how to pull the mobs and get them in a right position so that your entire group can just mow them down and everybody loves to see this i know you've seen it from other mmos when you have a great tank and run it just feels so good because you could just do your damage and you know have fun see big numbers and all that stuff so it is a hard role to do, but if you do it right, you will have instant cues into pretty much any group you want to go into. And this only gets better in the higher dungeons because they actually get really, really difficult. And this starting from like 35 and 45 onward, it's actually hard. It's hard to tank. It is a very hard role. It, the skill cap is very high. The skill ceiling is also high. So it's it's a great role for people who want to challenge themselves and have a lot of fun in this game, but also to make sure that they get into a dungeon run whenever they want. Like if they want a dungeon run, boom, they snap their fingers and a healer and some DPS are there. And that's usually how it works. The healer does time, kind of take a little bit to find sometimes, but it's not nearly as bad as the tank. I see constant messages for... Oh man, like I need a tank for this, I need a tank for the depths, and that's a big thing right now. Uh, there is the 35 dungeon, uh, Starstone and Everfall, which would be the Shatter Obelisk. That one is pretty good too. Um, it does require a decent tank, but really starting at 45 is where the magic happens, and that's where you get into the depths. The depths is no joke. Uh, it is hard. It is very hard, right? And if you are not a good tank, Captain Thorpe will kick your butt for real. He is not messing around at all. You need to have mastery of these mechanics. So if you really enjoy that challenge, you want to be in a group instantly, then tanking might be for you. And keep in mind that you can level up your weapons whenever you want. So you can switch to this sword right now, starting today, and pick up some tank gear, and you could start tanking. You don't have to do a reroll on your character or anything like that. You can fill that gap whenever is necessary and that's the cool part is that you can sort of fill the tank role without actually being a tank if you want to so it will just give you a shortcut to get into dungeons really easy and make sure that they're successful and smooth runs right so that's why you should tank right everyone's gonna need this right now the second part of this is gonna be the guide that we're gonna be looking into and that's gonna be covering how do you tank, right? So first, we'll take a look at Sword Shield Talents, and you can see what I have on the board here. I'll go over a few things, but mainly having all three of these abilities, uh, Shield Bash is your first one. It's just going to do a quick stun, but it also taunts monsters that it hits. 
if you have a gem in your socket, which we will go over right after this. Uh, shield Rush will kind of dash you forward. You'll knock people down or back a little bit. And then the main core thing is going to be Defiant Stance, which reduces the incoming damage you take for a short amount of time. And it also AoE taunts everyone around you. So these are the very important things. Uh, if I go to my gear, you can notice that I have a gem in my sword. And this is very important because you can't really tank without a gem in your sword. You need a carnelian gem in your sword, which activates your taunts on your abilities and increases the amount of threat that you generate flat out. So everything you do with this weapon will do increased threat and it will activate the special abilities on the weapons like this one down here, the description, it says taunt gem compatible, right? So it tells you exactly what you need to have. It says if you have a carnelian gem equipped in your sword, then this ability causes a taunt to all enemies hit. Now this taunt is six seconds standard, so you can kind of use that to play around with it. Other than that, you generally pick up good passives that would reduce the amount of damage you would take. So here I have the fortify when I block an attack, increase stamina damage, or decrease stamina damage when I block a melee attack, which will allow you to block for longer. And I think a very important ability is this one, which is gonna be you gain stamina when hitting a target with your shield bash or shield rush, because that will allow you to regenerate that stamina so that you can use it for blocks, right? So other than that, it's pretty standard. You want to take some of these damage reduction abilities and then this final talent, which kind of absorbs some AoE damage around you while you're blocking, which is very useful because a lot of dungeon monsters cleave and a lot of bosses like to cleave as well. So mitigating damage to your melee that are doing damage on the boss is going to be really nice to see. So there are some other options. I'm only level 12 with the sword, so 12 out of 20. So I will be picking up some different things. I'll do a full in-game tank guide later on so you guys can see exactly what I'm going. And I'll even talk about where you may want to change that up for a specific dungeon. So stay tuned for that. But for now, this is the basics. So you can mirror my build if you want. I would recommend going for the three skills at first if you only have like level three in the weapon mastery. And then from there on, you can start filling out passives that you feel are valuable to you. But I will say that getting this Defiant Stance and the two talents in that tree is the most important because they will restore health and further reduce damage. Then you can worry about some of the other sweet, like, side passives, right? And then once you do finally get to 20, you know, again, we'll talk about that build later and how that works. So that's pretty much it. What weapon should you pair with it? Um, you could pair with the great axe and the warhammer my personal preference is the great axe this is what my skill tree looks like for that it's just uh, having an ability to life leech when you pull in with reap there's a second talent which uh heals you for the percentage of the damage done so me returning that massive uh heal on big aoe groups is a nice thing to do and i got a bit of execute damage from mobs or low health and charge from mobility and i personally think this is the best tanking weapon because the great axe just has insane damage and for some reason it wasn't touched and it's just horribly strong right uh so the mobility allows you to charge forward and then get ahead so that you can get the taunt on everything a good option would also be the Warhammer because it does have a lot of CC and knockdown abilities. This is my general skill tree for this. The important one is probably uh, the armor break ability with lasting trauma, which is going to shred their armor by 15% for 10 seconds. Makes your group does do more damage. It's definitely not bad, but I would take an eye out on this one because this one can do quite a lot of AoE damage and knockdown, so it could be good to use. Um, you could consider Hatchet or Spear. Spear has a powerful rend on it, and Hatchet has a good self-heal, but it's more of a damage weapon in my opinion. So for now, these are the things that I have kind of found uh, best as they do scale off of strength the hardest, right? So going into that, that pretty much covers the weapons that you're going to be using. Now let's talk about something really important, which is going to be the shield. Uh, so the shield that you see I have on the screen here is a tower shield. Now there is a big difference between a tower shield and a small shield, like a round shield. So the trade-off is that the round shield, uh, there's three types of shields. The round shield does more damage, but it has less blocking stamina damage and less blocking stability. If you can see my stats here on the shield, it says it has 46 blocking stamina damage, and then down at the bottom it has 45% blocking stability. So what does that mean? That means that every time you're guarding with your shield like this, you're getting hit with a melee attack, you're going to lose a certain amount of stamina. 
But if you have more blocking stability, you're going to lose less stamina. And that's the part that lets you tank, because if you can tank boss monsters' hits, then you can essentially stop all of their damage, as long as you have stamina, right? So you need that stamina to be high or have enough to absorb most of the monster's hits before your guard breaks. If your guard breaks, you can't block at all, and you have to wait some time for your stamina to regenerate. It's quite punishing. So that's the last thing you want to do as a tank is have your guard break, and that's why we have those talents on the skills that let us restore some stamina. So when you do get low, you can pop out and just hit them with a quick bash and a charge and then pop your stamina back up and then be good to go. So that's quite a nice thing there. So hopefully you can kind of see where the shield value comes in. So that starts with the round shield. The second version is the kite shield, which does a little bit more damage and has some blocking stability onto it. And the last is the tower shield, which does the lowest damage of all of them, but has the highest blocking stability. And this is what you're going to need for um big tanking right for tanking bosses and also pro tip as you can see this shield has on crit cause bleed weapon damage that's a pretty good ability you guys might want to check that one out because you do get the shield stats when you have a sword equipped uh, so make sure you take a look at that so that's what you're looking for there in addition to that it does give some armor elemental and physical although it's not much so it's kind of irrelevant for the most part uh, so that's pretty much the functionality of like the tanking setup and then we can kind of get into the thick of things which I will hop into another section here. I have a video of me tanking the depths and I'll just go over some general pools and maybe show some uh, other footage at the end. We'll see how that goes. So let's go ahead and hop into that and I'll do some commentary there. All right, we are back here, and as you can see, we have just entered the depths. This is the level 45 dungeon on launch, so this is the live servers uh, that we are doing here. Uh, basically, as you can see, I'm going to be running forward, and this will be the applied tanking strategy. Use the charge to get in, switch to the sword, then use defiant stance for the AoE taunt. Unfortunately, I'm a bit ahead of my team because I'm pretty aggro, so they're catching up for now. Uh, but basically, you want to turn these monsters around so that their backs are facing towards your team, ideally. And then you can weave in a little bit of damage while holding up your guard. So make sure you keep an eye on your stamina bar. And when you feel that you sufficiently have the aggro, you can switch to this weapon like I am doing right now and just do some big boy damage with like the axe or the hammer or whatever it is your secondary weapon is, right? So here I do have my taunt up, so I want to get this range guy off. So bam, hit him with the shield bash, and then kind of come back to the group and start hitting the other mobs that I, uh, you know, hit previously. So that I make sure that I have the aggro on every single mob that is in combat, and then I focus on doing damage, right? And sometimes you can let a mob go here or there. It's not too big of a deal, to be honest. Um... As long as you know your group has it covered with your healer and things like that. So once again, the same application will be applied. I'm probably going to charge in. I'm going to hit into the back line. I'm going to switch to shield, pop defiant stance. They're all taunted. You can see that uh, black shockwave icon on their face or on the board up, up, up above. And that basically will let me know that they are indeed taunted. So this is going to be the general strategy for grouping up mobs. And then you want to make sure that you're chasing down these mobs that are hitting, you know, fresh, freshly spawned or they got stuck on a healer for whatever reason. You just want to peel them off and kind of go like that. Uh, so that's going to be the general go-to plan on how you would do a lot of that stuff. So remember that your shield will provide you a lot of blocking stability, and that's where you want to absorb attacks as much as possible. Just quick toggle the shield on and block an attack or two and then start doing your damage again because you do need to do damage to maintain the aggro. And it's okay to take hits, especially on trash, trash monsters like these guys here. I probably opt for more damage than I would anything because once you have that defiant stance running, you're very tanky so even if you get hit it's not that big of a deal and as you can see i'm facing those mobs away from my group so they're able to hit them in the back get that bonus back attack damage and we can just kind of go like this so, so it's the same plan is just happening over and over right we're just gathering people and trying to spin them around so that uh, you know your team can kind of go and do the things that they need to do Okay, so in the next section, we'll talk about bosses and how you need to handle their mechanics, because that's going to be really important.
Okay, here we are at Captain Thorpe. He is the depths boss. I'm sure you have seen this many times before, uh, so no worries. So we're just going to do a general rundown of tanking this boss. So as you can see, I'm going to start by facing it away from the group, and this is going to be your general strategy for all bosses. I hit him with the taunt and the shield bash, and I'm squeezing in some damage because he's not doing anything. The second I see he's doing something, I have my guard up. You can see that stamina is going down. I have a brief reprieve to attack again. There he goes again. I got hit by that unfortunate, but my guard is back up once again. I'm waiting for his combo. So every boss is different. You have to figure out what their attack pattern is and then try to block in time. So here I thought he was going for me, but he actually pulled someone in. And you could see his like kind of dance that he does, right? Uh, so you want to squeeze in damage where you can. And there I blocked that one perfect just in time and the second follow-up. I got hit by the third as he has quite a bit there. And this would be where I get dangerously close to that seven stamina where I almost got my block broken, but not quite. So that's, that's where you want to do. You want to walk that line between getting your block pretty much fully utilized and giving it a moment to rest so that you can recover stamina. Like here, I'm trying to recover stamina, so I'm trying to move and kite out of the way and use my big pot to kind of like follow up that uh, damage uh, or that uh, recover that damage, right? Because I am taking some big hits in here. Uh, so this would be the phase one for the boss as we're getting quite a bit low here. And there are a few things here where you need to switch. As you can see, I switched to my great axe and I wanna do a bunch of damage because this is an ad phase that you have to burn. So we're kind of burn these ads as quickly as possible. And then I immediately go back over towards the boss and I'm gonna do a bit of damage. And then once he's done with this mechanic laser thing that he has, I should taunt him to make sure that I got that off. And there I did. And I bring him away from my group so that they can deal with those monsters and put his back towards the group and start kiting him around as best as I can, right? And, and that's the situation that you want to be in here. You want also want to watch out for certain mechanics and things of that nature because, you know, there's a lot of things going on in the battlefield for sure, but make sure that you just play around that stamina gauge, right? Uh, so we'll go ahead and fast forward here. And here we are in the final moments of the boss. As you can see, we kind of went through those phases and burned him down. But that tanking strategy is essentially going to be the same. And as you can see there, I did get the purple sword again. This is actually my second purple sword for it because I was helping some GIMP members get the dungeon done. I'm telling you, the tank is a very important role. It's, it's hard to do. So it's always nice to see that kind of stuff going on. So hopefully this guide helped you get a decent idea of how to tank. And maybe it's the right role for you. So check it out. Give it a try in Amorai and let me know what you think. And if anybody else has switched to tank, maybe based off of this or some of the other roles, uh, let me know. Let me know what, you, uh, what your thoughts are on that. So as always, thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe, like, and hit the bell if you enjoyed this content. If you really like this content, there is a join button below where you can become a member and get badges and benefits. There's also a Discord. Uh, where you can talk with like-minded community members and ask me questions. So if that's something you're interested in, feel free to check that out as well. All right, thanks for watching, everyone, and we will catch you in the next video.